Yeah. One thing that, uh, that that brings up, Rich Devinny and I were talking about it was, and there's, I feel like everybody in the world, every schmo, including myself being one of those schmoes, talks about the reticular activating system and the limited amount of information that comes in. But I feel like they're just people who are just regurgitating what they've heard before. So f- coming from your standpoint, knowing what you're talking about, um, can you explain the reticular activating system and exactly how that works with you know, it, and if we can wake up in the morning and set that reticular activating system to then look for specific outcomes. Yeah. So I uh, love the reticular activating s- system. Um, used to teach this to medical students. So um, I'm very familiar with it. I think the simplest way to think about it is it's a collection of brain areas. It's a mm-hmm. system after all um, that can queue up neuromodulators. Neuromodulators are what we've been talking about, acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, Mm -hmm. epinephrine. The reason the word modulator is important, not just neurotransmitter, not getting too down in the weeds here, but modulators, they're like playlists. They set the categories of things that your brain is able to do. So for instance, when serotonin levels are high, Mm -hmm. you generally are going to feel good about things in your immediate ownership or experience or environment. So it's kind of like gratitude. It's like gratitude. Mm-hmm. It's like you see your kid, you see your spouse, you see your your significant other and you just feel good. Mm-hmm. It's appreciation, it's gratitude. You, there's no seeking involved. Right. You have that. It's a, there's a security there. It could be the food that you're about to eat that you have, right? The dopamine system is all about want, desire, craving, motivation and getting more. It's ambition, mm-hmm. right? It's about a focus on things that are outside your immediate experience, atmosphere, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so it literally is in what we call the extra personal space. It's beyond the space that you have. It's, um, you know, I I don't know why I've been thinking about this because I haven't invested in it, but there's a lot of attention now about cryptocurrency, Mm -hmm. right? So every, uh, the joke I like to tell myself is, and it could be very exciting. I don't know. I don't know anything about investing, but that people's, it's a purely dopaminergic system right now. Right right? People who have a lot of it don't know what it's going to be worth. People who don't have it don't know what it's going to be worth, but the actual value of it is not actually set by anything else except dopamine, right? So if people are excited about it, it will go up in value, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, so for those of you who are interested in cryptocurrency, understand the dopamine system. It's all dopamine as I've watched the excitement grow, et cetera. That's dopamine. Mm -hmm. Very different than serotonin. Cause if you have a Bitcoin or you have a hundred or a million Bitcoins right now, you actually don't know what you have. Mm -hmm. Is it in the serotonin system? Are you rich? I don't know now, maybe not. So it's really interesting. It's a, it's an externalization of something that's normally within our heads. The acetylcholine system is all about focus. As we said, and epinephrine is all about alertness. Mm -hmm. There are other neuromodulators too. The reticular activating system combines a perception of something in your environment with one of these particular neuromodulators, right? Because they're not just so diffuse that you walk around um, excited about everything. There's a name for that. It's called mania. If you if people have too much dopamine, mm-hmm. they're excited about everything. They yeah. buy things they can't afford. They start relationships they can't continue, and they are truly manic, right? That's if people have very high levels of serotonin, unhealthy levels of serotonin, they're so blissed out, they don't want to get out of their chair. They're fine right Mm -hmm. where they are. The opioid system will do the same if Mm -hmm. it's really ramped up. So the reticular activating system takes inputs from the ears, literally, and from the eyes mainly, and combines it with specific combinations of neuromodulators and allows you to be either focused on and in pursuit of or focused on and in gratitude or appreciation of, or focused on and stressed about particular things. So the way this plays out in the real world is when people talk about, you know, whatever you, what is it? uh, I hear this, this thing, energy flows where attention goes. Where attention goes, energy flows. Yeah. So I think that's a a wellness perspective or what, you know, a typical wording perspective on the fact that if I, you know, the example that's almost always given about the reticular activating system outside of the you know, neuroscience anyways, you know, if you're going to buy a new car, mm-hmm. thinking about, oh yeah, those new blazers, which are awesome, by the way. Um, the ones I've seen anyway, those vintage ones that they mm-hmm. put out, uh, uh, Broncos, blazers. Yeah, the Broncos. Broncos, mm-hmm. Broncos, forgive me. Those are, those are great. I never really thought about them. I saw a picture of them. And then now I've, if I see one, I'm like, that's really cool. They're rare. Yeah. But your sensors for those are now I, that's probably a combination of dopamine and a certain shape, a certain perception. And so, yes, you can guide your nervous system in that direction. And as a consequence, your nervous system will start devoting resources to parsing, oh, well, that's 
That's definitely not a blazer. That one is, that's a knockoff one. Oh, that one's really, really nice. These kind of thing. And so you can use perceptions as a way to drive neuromodulators. Typically neuromodulators also drive perception. So if the serotonin system is really high, you're going to be focused on things in your immediate sphere. Mm -hmm. If your dopamine system is really high, you're going to be thinking about the next thing. So the reticular activating system is a way that you take those two things, perception and neuromodulators, and then there's a third element. You toggle it to levels of arousal, hmm. right? So what you do is you get excited when you see the, the combination of things that you're looking for in the environment or something like it. So the way I would think about the reticular activating system is like a template. You've decided to create a template. So let's say you, you're writing a book, which mm -hmm. is exciting, and you've got some idea in mind, and you could create a template that, okay, it's a bestseller, or you could create a template of all the great impact it's gonna have. Probably since you're in the creative stage, you're gonna create a template of, okay, this book is gonna have a certain feel, people are gonna derive certain benefits from it, and you start working th from that template. And what will happen is you will start to queue up through your subconscious and your conscious mind, mm -hmm. the things that you already possess in your mind and in your environment or mm -hmm. your, in, in your notes or in your co-writer's notes, if you have a co-writer, all the things that could go into that. Yeah. And you'll also start seeking those things in the world, but yeah. there's nothing mystical about that, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing secretive about it, right? No pun intended. What it is, is that you are accessing memory stores and neuromodulators that are associated with a particular end goal. Mm -hmm. Now, the same would be true if you decided, you know what, I'm really going to work hard on my relationship to my significant other and my home life. You would immediately start looking for the things that gave you the serotonin release that you're seeking there. Because typically when we are already in the company of things or we have a relationship with somebody or something, we aren't in that like heavy dopaminergic adventure type drive, drive, drive mode. Right. So I just threw a lot of words at something, maybe overcomplicated a little bit, but you want to think perception. What am I paying attention to? Neuromodulator, which are these four? Because there are many, but this, the main ones are acetylcholine, dopamine, epinephrine, and serotonin. And then how is that driving my arousal or my excitement? How is that contracting or dilating my worldview? And I think if people just spent a little time thinking about that, you realize, wow, there are these powerful systems in the brain that are drawing me towards certain things and away from others, but it's mainly by funneling us down particular paths. Yeah. And so when I hear about um, the kind of actualization and manifestation and all that kind of stuff, I, I'm not dismissive of it because I'm a scientist. Mm -hmm. I'm not dismissive of it at all, but I look at things through the lens of neuroscience. That's just yeah. how my brain works. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do professionally. So I think that the reticular activating system is when you place an intention, like if you write down on a piece of paper before you go to sleep at night, with something about your book or your, and you put that away. Yeah. You are definitely queuing up for your brain, the things that it should pay attention to, because it can't pay attention to everything.